Hello, thank you for watching. This is Professor Ryan Paul at Texas A&M Kingsville, and you are watching uh, my presentation on research, specifically on finding basic research material, basic reference materials online. When I talk about reference materials, research materials, I'm thinking about the most kind of basic, simple, and also reliable in, in, in a certain sense materials. Uh, reference materials or tertiary sources, as they're called. Uh, tertiary sources, reference materials, I'm thinking about things that are not presenting original research in themselves, nor are they writing on, uh, reflecting on other research or, or reflecting on a, a debate, making a, a point in a position. Rather, they are, the idea is that they are supposed to be objective, factual, um, and as free from uh, any sort of bias as possible. Uh, this is a definition of reference materials, um, of tertiary sources from uh, the University of Minnesota website. Index, they index, abstract, organize, compile, or digest other sources. So it's picking all the important things, the important details and facts from other sources and presenting them in a single spot. Um, usually their chief purpose is to list, summarize, or simply repackage ideas or other information. So examples are things like encyclopedia, dictionaries, almanacs, directories, guidebooks, textbooks. Uh, so the idea here is tertiary sources are as far away from the topic in some sense as possible. They're not direct records of the topic, nor are they reflecting on or writing about studying a topic. Rather, they are summarizing the ideas that others have presented uh, and the knowledge that others have gathered on whatever the topic at hand is. Now, in terms of what's available online in just general access, things you could find on Google, for example, um, there are hundreds, perhaps thousands of different encyclopedia, dictionaries, almanacs, fact books, guidebooks, uh, handbooks, all sorts of things online. They're published by all sorts of different groups, some by academic organizations like schools or gr uh, uh, groups of academics or by publishers some by professionals or experts in the field, some by special interest groups, some just as passion projects by people who are heavily invested or interested in a certain topic. Uh, they are on, there are some that are general reference, general dictionaries, general encyclopedia. There are also many, many specialized uh, types of reference materials, things for particular regions, handbooks for particular countries, professions, medical, uh, all sorts of different scientific fields. So they're, they're, uh, you can get very specialized information on some of these. In terms of the access models, how the information is available, there are varying models. Some are 100% free. Uh, some, like say in the Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, have a limited access model where some information is free, but um, uh, 
to get full access, you have to pay a subscription. Um, and some are subscription only with l almost no information given away for free, uh, only perhaps a couple samples, and you have to pay uh, a small, sometimes a large subscription to get access to it. And so, of course, as with anything that's just generally available on the Internet, they're widely varying in their quality and reliability. So you need to do all the same kind of due diligence as you would investigating any other website that you're getting information from. Uh, who are the pub who's publishing it? What is their agenda? What is their purpose? Who's the author? What is their expertise? Um, where are they getting their information? All those sorts of things. Same questions you need to ask um, of reference materials. In terms of what's available online um, through our library, and this is uh, just for my students, obviously, um, <clears throat> there are many different databases that we have, uh, many different reference databases. Um, again, many on, on different specific topics, things like that. Uh, most of the databases that we have, of course, are geared towards um, not tertiary materials, not encyclopedia and things like that, but getting you to original research. But there are some very good reference materials um, and some that I'll explore in this presentation. Uh, three that I want to name, three databases that I want to name that are useful that we have access to. One is the Funk and Wagnalls New World Encyclopedia. And that's just a single source. Everything in there is from that one encyclopedia. And they're a good publisher, so that's a, a solid, reliable information. Um, there's the Gale Virtual Reference Library, and that is a database that is uh, actually contains access to uh, many hundreds or thousands, I think, even of reference sources online, specialized and general reference sources. So it's a compilation. It compiles all sorts of different um, sources so you can search for information uh, you'll get. So for example, if you search for a specific topic, you might not only get the information from the general interest encyclopedia, which will be um, perhaps a little bit broader, you might also get hits from uh, a more specialized encyclopedia that will have more detailed information for you. And then finally, there's Credo Reference, which like the Gale Virtual Reference Library, indexes multiple different reference materials. I'm going to start with looking at a few things on Encyclopedia Britannica, since it's an open access or, or partially open access uh, source and it's something that you would find on Google. You don't have to go through our library website uh, to get to it. Um, so this is the interface, basic interface for Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, I'm just going to type in voting rights. We can see we got a lot of different sources. Um, already some specific topics that we might want to research. The Voting, right, Voting Rights Act, U, U.S. legislation, August 1965, American Civil Rights Movement. Um, there's topics about voting in African Americans, women's suffrage, notable U.S. Supreme Court decisions, LBJ. So we are starting to see there's a lot of pretty wide variety of topics that uh, start to appear when we begin to search for uh, voting rights in this in the Encyclopedia Britannica. So let's click on Voting Rights Act as just an example of what we uh, what we might find. Voting Rights Act tells us what it is and notice it has some links to other articles that have related information. Shortly following the American Civil War, the 15th Am Amendment was ratified, right? So it gives us the historical background to this particular law, um, why it was needed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera goes through to the signing of the Voting Rights Act, its reauthorization in 2006, right? So it goes, um, gives us a lot of good factual information. But what's most important is not just the information that it gives us, but it gives us all these other related topics, right? The 15th Amendment, that's something 
that we might that might be pertinent. Understanding the Fifteenth Amendment, understanding also here the Nineteenth Amendment. That's when women get the right to vote. Um, so this might be a topic that's useful and something that comes up when we start researching, looking for more. Uh, 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 substantial articles, looking for secondary and primary sources, not just uh, trying to get these factual background information, but when we start looking for things that are more substantive to make an argument. Um, so let's see. We've got all sorts of different uh, issues here. Um, poll taxes, voting, literacy, uh, uh, literacy tests, right? So there's a lot of different um, uh, uh, potential topics to research. Let's go back to the search engine, and now I've typed in the, uh, the phrase voter fraud, um, and let's see what that brings up. Voter ID law, so that is a topic that might be good. Russia investigation from the article Donald Trump, so you see not only are we getting um, historical information, but uh, the encyclopedia also goes up to contemporary events, current events, gives us um, what I would assume various summaries of uh, news articles and so forth. Campaign results from the U.S. presidential election of 1856, history. Um, some things start getting, okay, so now we start getting uh, off, not things that are not necessarily related to um, what we're interested, which is American uh, elections in the United States, um, but things that just come up when we look at the topic voter fraud. More results. Era of conservative domination, 1877 to 90. Uh, and so now we start getting into things that are just more about fraud, right? So, but we did find some good subjects, right? Voter ID law, that's a useful topic. Um, gives us the history of voter ID laws, uh, some prominent court cases that might be useful to research. The Donald Trump article about the Russia investigation um, gives us a history of the current of, uh, of the current events, what's going on, um, a rundown of significant uh, uh, things that have happened. And a summary of so we can this the encyclopedia takes us up to the present day or almost um, in terms of its information. So we're starting to see here in terms of looking up voter IDs, voter suppression, voter uh, voting rights. Um, we've got a wide range of different ways we can go. We could go into historical research. We could go um, back into the 19th century. Uh, we could go looking in terms of the civil rights movement, mid 20th century. We can also talk about this in terms of current events. Uh, so the topic is starting to open up for us into a lot of different possible ways that we might investigate. Now let's explore a little bit um, some of the resources that I mentioned that are available through our library. So first, I want to look at the Funk and Wagnalls um, encyclopedia. So how do we get to it? Well, library webpage, we go to online resources, I happen to know where this one is. It's, it starts with F, but of course we didn't know what was available. We might just start browsing through these A to Z, but here we know this one's under F. Funk and Wagnalls, New World Encyclopedia. So that takes us to this interface. This probably looks familiar to you if you've used the MLA International Bibliography, Humanities Full Text, Academic Search Complete, a lot of the different um, databases and sources use the same EBSCO host interface. They use the same search engine. So, still on the same topic, I'm going to type in here, let's look at gerrymandering. And notice how we got all sorts of, just by typing in, starting to type in the word, um, a lot of different possible sources or possible different subjects. Gerrymandering the United States, gerrymandering or redistri redistricting. Um, that'll help us find more sources. Gerrymandering in Texas, gerrymandering reform, gerrymandering problems. So let's just look at, I'll put gerrymandering or redist redist redistricting. Um, use these two roughly synonymous terms to see what we can find. And as we search, we start getting a lot of different terms here. Okay, electoral reform, reform, gerrymander, United States Census of 2010, Lebanon, Supreme Court of the United States, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Census, California. So we get um, only nine if we look at up gerrymandering or redistricting. Let's see what we have here for electoral reform. Gives us the uh, one page 
uh, uh, history of electoral reform in Great Britain, early electoral reform in the United States, voting rights, um, again, also has links to important topics, related topics. Internet voting uh, tells us to go to C registration, reapportionment, redistricting, C gerrymander. So it has links to other useful uh, sources, other articles. Federal Election Commission, that might be a useful one to look up. All sorts of different information here. Um, let's go back to our search results. Uh, United States Census of 2010. What does that give us? So some interest, uh, some issues here. Um, reapportionment and redistricting is where it seems to come up. Um, so that tells us a little bit about how redistricting was a controversial process and specifically how it was engaged or how it was um, uh, practiced after the 2010 census. So. The information here, this is um, similar to the Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, again, it's bare bones, doesn't give you tons of information, uh, but it gives you a good factual basis. It gives you a good set of terms and issues that you're gonna wanna research. And it gives you, starts uh, again, uncovering the landscape of the, uh, of the research, uh, starts uncovering the research landscape. Okay, now let's uh, search again. Uh, I've searched for voting here um, as a different term. Some useful terms here, some useful uh, entries. Literacy test. Literacy test in the United States was a method used to prevent African Americans and other minority groups from voting. So this useful one sentence summary tells us whether or not, gives us a, a clue as to whether or not this is a source that might be useful depending on our research. If we're particularly interested in, interested in um, the voting rights of African Americans or voter suppression of African Americans, if we're particularly interested in voting in the civil rights movement, uh, this would be a useful entry. Selma marches, series of protests for African American voting rights that took place in Alabama in 1965. Uh, so that again might be something that would be useful if depending on our research topic, electoral reform, suffrage, registration, stock, poll tax, 19th Amendment, right? So, uh, and we can go through to the next page. Woman suffrage, um, some names of some specific people who uh, are involved in some way, we, we won't know until we look at them, um, in uh, voting, in the issue of voting. So let's see who David Bruce Vitter is. He's a member of the United States 7th. Uh, let's see, where does voting come in? Maybe it's just that he was elected. Ah, he has a conservative voting record. That's probably where the term voting came from. So again, as with any search engine, not everything that you find will be, uh, not everything that comes back will be a useful source. So, but you can see again, lots of different things coming up, historical, different names, some relevant to our research, some not. Okay, now let's go back to uh, the Tamuk website. And let's look at a different research, um, a different uh, uh, reference library, and that's the Gale Virtual Reference Library. So we'll click on that, and that takes us to the website. Um, you'll notice it's a, you'll notice as when it comes up that it's a very different user interface than um, than the EBSCOhost one, than the one that we used for the Funk and Wagnalls encyclopedia. Um, and you'll also see this has a whole lot of different types of. It's not just one source, but all sorts of different sources. Um, arts and Humanities Through the Eras, Contemporary Fashion, um, Encyclopedia of Clothing and Fashion, uh, American Men and Women of Science, Business Plans Handbook, Scholarships, Fellowships, and Loans, Rhythmic's Animal Life, um, so uh, Africa Encyclopedia, so uh, much more specialized different types of uh, sources here, and many more than the single source of Encyclopedia Britannica or of um, Funk and Wagnalls. Uh, I wanted to look at those first because they're more limited, but this is something where you can potentially find a whole lot more information. So let's just put in our term voting rights. Let's see a bunch of different suggested topics. Uh, voting rights, eight pages from the Encyclopedia of American Constitution, um, seven pages from the Gale Encyclopedia of Everyday Law on Civil Rights, specifically the, the Civil Rights Movement, or actually just the Civil Right of Voting Rights. Um, five pages from Governments of the World, A Global Guide to Citizens' Rights and Responsibility. 
Voting Rights Act of 1965 from West's Encyclopedia of American Law, um, the update from the Encyclopedia of the American Constitution, another article on the Voting Rights Act of 1965, eight pages, the major acts of Congress, um, another one, Voting Rights Act of 1965 from the uh, American Decades reference book. So a lot, a lot of different information here. Um, other amendments, uh, civil disabilities, alien suffrage, African Americans in political office, race and voting. Um, so this gives us access to a whole lot more information, a whole lot more um, uh, sources, basic sources, reference material than the previous two that we've looked at. Let's just take a look, for example, at the voting rights from the Encyclopedia of the American Constitution. Right, We have a um, long history here, uh, also links to related topics, or at least they're highlighted. It looks like they're not linked directly. Ah, some things are links, linked, political parties, for example. Um, but yeah, you can see a lot. We've got a whole long history here of voting rights in the United States and how the Constitution has been variously interpreted um, at specific moments in history in terms of how voting rights were distributed or restricted. So a lot of good information here. Let's go back to our initial search. Uh, let's see the Voting Rights Act of 16, 1965 from West Encyclopedia of American Law. What does that give us? Sweeping federal law that seeks to prevent voting discrimination. Um, the passage was a watershed event in U.S. history, right? So a lot of information here. Uh, the specific um, sections of the law. It actually gives the, the text of the law itself. So we have that information here. That's nice, uh, very useful to have the actual quote, uh, the actual text of the law in front of you. So that's good information. See what else we got. Um, let's go to the voting rights. Where was it? Let's look at this one. Voting Rights Act of 1965 from the American Decades uh, reference. So you'll notice even though these are on the same topics and they're all reference materials, so of roughly we might say reliable, uh, similar reliability. They um, they often approach the subject from different angles, and they often um, provide different uh, levels of detail. So you might uh, that's why doing this sort of research is really important, and it can take a long time uh, because you're trying to get as much of the ground covered as you can before you start making your own argument, your own. Um, uh, contribution to the discussion. Let's take a look at what gerrymandering gives us. Gerrymander from West Encyclopedia of American Law, uh, two pages from the uh, American Encyc Encyclopedia of the American Constitution, more from the West Encyclopedia of American Law, Dictionary of American History, um, state legislatures, different dictionary of American history, apportionment, issues of how legislative, seat, legislative seats are distributed, electoral districting from the Encyclopedia of American Constitution, African Americans and the law. So we have a lot of information here, again, about uh, gerrymandering. A lot of it overlaps with our um, previous research. Let's see what other topics came up when we were typing in gerrymandering. Uh, let's see racial gerrymandering. So that specific topic is covered in these various entries, race and voting, civil rights, voting rights, reapportionment, Shaw versus Hunt, a specific, um, uh, a specific court case that would be useful to study, right? So we can get more fine-tuned in our search here. So the Gale Virtual Reference Library, a lot of great information, um, also useful because it gives you very special access to very specialized uh, dictionaries and encyclopedia that have details and more uh, uh, ideas that you might want to look into than in the general uh, general readership broad overview encyclopedias like Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay, one last database to look at, one last reference material uh, source to look at, and that's Credo Reference. So back to the Tama website, scroll down under C to Credo Reference. 
that'll take us to here. Again, different interface than the uh, Academic Search Complete or uh, MLA, similar to the Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica and the Gale Virtual Library. This is a, it's a kind of just a very simple um, search bar, right? So let's see what happens when we put in, let's say, voter suppression. Let's see if anything comes up here. 52 articles, uh, Bruce Springsteen from some reason, uh, Democratic Party, Law from Keywords for American Cultural Studies, Cooper versus Harris, Milestone Documents in African American History, yes, I'll accept your cookies, um, Experiences of Ethnic Groups, Women, Gays, Lesbians, and Juveniles from the Handy American Government Answer Book. So we can see that, um, again, uh, it's in a very, and it's a different set of um, encyclopedia, some of them, uh, it has a different set of resources, so even though it's similar to the Gale reference library, um, it accesses a, a number of different sources, it has um, different encyclopedia, again, they'll provide you with different, um, different perspectives on the subject. Let's look at uh, voter turnout. Let's see what that gives us. Search. And as my internet moves slowly, as we look for voter turnout, still going, still going. Obviously, I need to upgrade my internet service. Here we go. Civic engagement and governments from how's life 2017 not quite sure what that is uh voting from society at a glance 2016 oecd social interactions compulsory votering historical Doc dictionary of australia lowering the voting age top three pros and cons pro con headlines uh, voting rights from poverty and the government in america a historical encyclopedia so you're going to have a lot more is voting rational? That's an interesting one from the Encyclopedia of Public Choice. So again, each one of these databases and Credo and Gale uh, of the all the ones we've looked at are the most powerful. They give you the most um, information. And this is a neat feature that Credo has. It has this little mind map feature where you can see it connects you to related terms. So voter turnout is related related to voting, election, elections, poll, voter registration negative campaigning, Help America Vote Act. So it it allows you to see connect, related topics and jump to them. And then that builds out an even further mind map of further subjects. Voting system, majority rule, majority, proportional representation, election, instant runoff voting, right? Let's say if we pick clicked on voting, what's that going to open up? So Credo has this really nice feature because uh, it's a, a visual way to help you discover, assuming that your internet works at a decent speed, uh, discover all sorts of different related sources. Let's just see what happens when we open it up to voting. Right? Oh, I'd already looked at that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it for the Credo one. Okay, uh, I think that gives you a sense of the kind of things you can find in these different resources. So let's wrap up this presentation with a brief review. So we've been talking about reference materials, tertiary sources, things that are in some sense the farthest away from the topic. They're not dealing with original research or, or reporting directly on a subject, but they provide us with unbiased, usually, supposedly, hopefully, unbiased reporting and summaries of research, other people's research, facts, events, things like that. They um, lean towards the factual, the verifiable, the knowable. They are not, they will, they will present theories, but they will say this is one theory that someone has offered, things like that. They, uh, encyclopedias, their goal is not to take a side in a debate, but just to present as much information uh, as possible in a short space in a, in a uh, concise entry. Um, so they are usually unbiased, that's the intention, but be sure to investigate the credibility of any unfamiliar source or website or database. Always make sure you're checking to see, is this credible? Are the people writing it credible? Is the, is the information up to date, etc. 
Uh, they're most useful for pro providing background information and allowing you to discover the research landscape. Uh, they So often they are not cited in final papers, but they are part of the deep research that you do to familiarize yourself with the topic and to get you started to, to help you find a direction to uh, make your statement, make your contribution to the debate. And different resources, different encyclopedia or different uh, references will provide different perspectives and different levels of detail. Um, so, for example, a entry in the American Dictionary of Law, I'm just making that name up, but, or the West's Dictionary of Law, an entry in that on the Voting Rights Act is going to be far more detailed than an entry in the uh, just general Encyclopedia Britannica. Similarly, an entry on the Voting Rights Act in the Encyclopedia of African American History uh, might be as detailed, but it's going to perhaps provide a different perspective than an entry in West's Encyclopedia of Law will, pre will present. Um, the Law Encyclopedia would be more focused on uh, the legal aspects of the Voting Rights Act and uh, its legal precedent and the various ways in which it has been challenged or supported by legislation since then. Whereas the entry in the African American Dictionary would be more interested in how uh, the Voting Rights Act um, was contributed to or was part of an ongoing narrative of the African American experience. So be sure to check different resources to find different uh, pieces of information um, and different perspectives. That will help you to discover again what is the angle you want to take on your research topic. All right, with that said, let's wrap it up. If you have any questions, please contact me. Otherwise, I wish you the day you wish yourselves, and I will see you in the next presentation.